Hello everyone, welcome back. Please comment, subscribe, folks, comment, subscribe, like the videos, also share the videos. I wanna thank you folks for watching, liking, and sharing the videos. You folks are the absolute best. Listen folks, there's a link tree down below, has the links to all of my social media platforms. Please go down there, follow me across all my social media platforms and talk to me because I talk back. Also down there as well as the links to all of my YouTube pages. Please go down there, subscribe to all my YouTube pages and turn on your notifications so when I post content, you folks will be in the know. Now with that said and done and put to the side, I'm going to talk to you folks today about the New York Jets' upcoming game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Boy, oh boy, we're facing Tom Brady. It's a matchup, Zach Wilson versus Tom Brady. The New York Jets versus the Bucs. This is a really good football team in the Bucs. It's, they're crazy. You know what I'm saying? They're a team that's pushing to make their playoff, you know, push to get deep into the playoffs. A lot of people have them picked as a Super Bowl favorite. But uh, we got them on our doorsteps this week. So... First thing I want to talk about is, man, we all know, you know, what's going on with the Jets right now. We are being ravaged by, you know, why we wear a mask. Everyone knows this is YouTube, so you got to watch what you say, all right? Everyone knows why we wear a mask out here. Everybody knows what's going on in the world. And uh, listen, we got so many players, and it seems like players are just being added to the list minute by minute, you know what I'm saying? So that it clearly is going to affect us going into this game with the Bucks. So, First thing I want to start off with is the New York Jets offense, okay? The first thing that you look at when you look at the Jets offense, you know, matching up with this Bucks defense is, can the New York Jets properly protect Zach Wilson in this game? Because this offensive line is going to be in some trouble. We all know that the Buccaneers have great pass rush and their defensive line is good. Well, there's been some key injuries along the Jets offensive line. We know that Mekhi Becton had been dealing with a knee injury. We were all waiting for him to come back, right? Well, guess what? He's not coming back for the rest of the season from what we're being told now. It's been reported that they're just going to let him sit out. The knee is not healing like they thought that it would. And, you know, he's a big guy. You know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. So it's looking like he's going to miss the rest of the season. You know, unless something crazy happens where he just kind of magically heals up overnight. It's looking like he's not going to play. So, you know, that return is not going to be a return. He's going to stay on the sidelines. And then Connor McGovern is now dealing with the knee injury as well. And he's going to miss the rest of the season. So that's going to impact us as center. So it looks like Feeney is probably going to come in and fill in his center. And again, we still have George Fant out there at left tackle. So you got to wonder, man, how can the New York Jets keep Zach Wilson protected with some of the changes that we had to make up front? Because let me tell you something. The Bucks got Vita Vea. That guy is ridiculous. He just throws people around. We've seen him dominate guys up front. They also got Niam Dasu. Pierre Paul as well is a guy that's dealing with a shoulder injury right now for the Bucks. But he might play against us. And if he does, we all know the havoc that he can cause. The New York Jets must have a sound strategy to keep Zach Wilson protected. Because if we don't, he's going to get eaten up by the Bucks pass rush. And we're just going to absolutely get abused up front. I think a big part of keeping Zach Wilson upright and keeping the Bucks defense in check is our ability to run the football as well. Let's get the ball in the hands of Michael Carter and start getting some positive and effective yards on the ground to keep the Bucks from just pitting their ears back and absolutely taking our heads off, all right? As well, when you look at the matchup between our wide receivers and their corners, let me tell you something. <laughs> the Bucks corners are solid. We all know that. Whitfield's dealing with a injury, so... Winfield's a really good corner. We'll see if he's actually going to play against us because, again, that's that foot injury. There's a lot of, you know, question marks if he's going to actually get cleared to play against us. But let me tell you something. They got Sherman over there. So Wilson's got to be very careful with the ball. We've seen at times where there's some late throws, some throws behind guys. We've seen that this season. You cannot do that stuff here. You throw a ball too far behind a guy or you're late on a throw and you allow these defensive corners to jump on it. Dude, they're going to jump that and pick it off. These guys are wise, they're savvy, they're veteran guys, and they will absolutely eat you alive. Now, other targets that should be out there, you know, from the tight end position, that's going to be in flux as well. We know that Griffin has been dealing with the injury, but now you got Wesco, who's going to be out as well with an injury. He looks like he's done, with this, done for the season. He's dealing with the knee injury. Then you got Croft, has now been added to the list for why we wear a mask. 
So it looks like he might not be able to play unless he gets cleared like a day before. It's looking like he probably is not going to be playing as well against the Bucks. So now we're down to pretty much two tight ends, which is Dan Brown and Kenny Yaboa. Kenny Yaboa is currently on the list for why we wear a mask. <laughs> it's crazy, man. He is currently on the list, right? But there's a lot of talk that he'll be off the list by the time the game comes. So we'll see what happens. But man... That is definitely not helping Zach Wilson. You know what I'm saying? It really isn't. Then you look at the Jets' defense, and there's even more questions there because there's so many guys that have now been added to the list for why we wear masks that, man. Oh. So when you look at the Jets' defense, the first thing you think is we got to get pressure on Tom Brady. If we don't find a way to get pressure on Tom Brady, he's going to pick us apart. We saw that for years with the Patriots. He would just absolutely eat us alive when we, when we didn't get to him and kind of smack him around. Well, now he's on the Bucks, and let me tell you, this guy is still as sharp as attack, and he will absolutely dice you up unless you find some way to get him off a spot and hit him early and often. Well, a lot of the guys that we were sending him, like John Franklin Myers, John Franklin Myers is currently on the list for why we wear a mask. You also got Quentin Williams on the list for why we wear a mask. Now Gerard Davis has been added to the list for why we wear a mask. It's like, man... So we got to have some guys step up. Maybe Quincy Williams is going to be able to step up and handle the business. Hopefully, maybe we get Quentin Williams back, you know, this week for why we're a mask. Hopefully he gets off that list and is able to play. But there's just a lot of questions. So that's in flux. Then you look at the secondary, our secondary, which was already all over the place with all the issues that we've had, you know, with guys being added to the list as well and not being able to play. So you look at the... Tampa Bay wide receiver core, Mike Evans, for them, is on the list for why we're wearing masks. So we'll see if he actually is able to get cleared. But you still got A.B. out there. And A.B.'s the deadly guy. I think they got Bashad Perryman as well. He's a guy that can get after it too. A guy that they can move around. He's a speedster. You know, not the greatest in the world, but a guy that can still make plays. But then we got Bryce Hall. Add it to the list for why we wear a mask. So who knows if he's going to play. So that's going to force Echo Echoes into a role. Maybe he ends up being our number one corner and playing. We'll see what we get out of him. But, man, that's a tough, yet another blow to the secondary. Bryce Hall's been our, in my opinion, has been our best corner this year. He's been solid, man. But now he may sit out this week against the Bucks, and the Bucks have a great you know, wide receiver core, a lot of wide receivers they can throw at you that guys that can just make plays. So that's that's already tough, man. So then you look at their running game, we've got to worry about Ronald Jones. But again, I think one of the biggest threats that they're going to have offensively is going to be Gronk. The New York Jets have struggled to stop tight ends this year. We've got eaten up by Gusecki, Pitts. The, the, the Patriots tight ends ate us up one game. It's just been ridiculous. And again, with Gerard Davis being on that list and possibly not going to be playing, he probably you know isn't going to be cleared by the time the game comes. We're going to have a lot of trouble covering him yet again. So when I look at this game, I just I, I can't pick the New York Jets. I, ju I just can't. I think we're going to struggle. I think we're going to have issues. Heck, even if we were fully healthy, I think we would have <laughs> issues with this football team. They're just, they're that good. You know what I'm saying? So comment down below. Let me know what you folks think. How do you folks feel about the situation? What are your thoughts of all these guys being added to the list for why we're wearing masks? <laughs> I mean, it's just more and more about the day. So comment down below. We'll go back and forth. You folks have a good one. Peace.